हेलो गाइस फ्रेंड्स स्टूडेंट्स व्यूअर्स हु इज वाचिंग हु एवर इज वाचिंग माय वीडियो होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग गुड एंड प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर योर एग्जाम्स एंड वर्किंग ऑन योर करियर टुडे वी आर गोना लर्न अबाउट समथिंग लिंक्ड टू द ऑडिट एंड अश्योरेंस माय प्रीवियस वीडियो वाज अबाउट uh assurance engagement all that but i thought that uh, there should be a video over the international regulation that is linked with audit and assurance so let's go uh to understand what is that international regulations uh, that is linked with audit and assurance uh if you heard about international federation of accountants so uh, we will understand uh, what is international uh, today we will understand what is international federation of accountants and uh, how uh, isa are being prepared right now and how isas are being issued by iaasb international auditing standards standards on auditing let's move uh, first understand what is ifac ifac is basically international federation of accountants ifac uh, then uh, you can say the, uh, this is a regulatory body of different accountancy professions like icaw uh, icap acca and other professional bodies uh, that is uh, those are uh, uh, in accountancy professions so ifac is basically the regulatory body and they provide different regulations uh, to these uh, Uh, pro, uh, accountancy profession a uh, professional body accountancy professional bodies so ifac is the global organization obviously it is a global and provide different regulation to the globe uh, globally for the accountancy profession ifac promotes international regulation of the accountancy profession like i said right by ensuring minimum requirement for accountancy qualification post qualification experience and guidance on accounting and assurance for accountants around the world there will be greater public confidence in the profession as a whole like acca uh, there are certain papers there are different subjects in uh, whole acca like uh, auditing like financial reporting like costing uh, like uh, business analysis like uh, financial management like taxation and all that after that when you uh, when you uh, clear all your papers you have to achieve certain experience as well like uh, there is a minimum requirement of 3 years uh, similarly in uh, ca uh, uh, ca pakistan or icap uh, there is certain requirements as well uh, similar like this so uh, these are all regulation are provided basically by uh, if you talk about globally ifac is regulating these bodies like icaw as well uh, there is a requirement of pro a professional experience and uh, there a need of uh, uh, clear need to clear certain papers as well so all these uh, regulations and uh, rules are being provided by the ifac to create uniformity between uh, different professional qualifications to maintain a high standard right moving forward now as we are uh, as we are uh, studying here about the audit and assurance so more relevant thing is isas isas mean international standards on auditing international standards on auditing are indirectly being indirectly being uh, issued by ifac because the i i isas international standards on auditing or you can say international audit and assurance standard board iasb is the subsidiary body of ifac like uh, uh, what written here is one of the subsidiary body of ifac is the international audit and assurance standard iasb it is their responsibility to develop and promote international standards on isas iasb responsibility is to uh, produce isas Uh, there is certain methodology how to produce isas there should be exposure draft and after that there will be 
discussion over that uh, from the public as well they take uh, different views from the public and then they deliver uh, their things we are not going on in that way i will discuss in my later videos uh, how normally the procedure of isa are but here we can uh, we, we have to understand basically that isas are basically uh, are the part of ifac ifac is because isb is the subsidiary body of ifac and you uh, and isb produce isas so you can say uh, I, ifac is also involved in producing these isas the, the, those are more relevant to our subject audit and assurance there are currently 37 isas and one international standard standard of quality control uh, there are quality standards as well to uh, identify uh, whether the there is a uh, the, whether uh, the quality is maintained during the course of the audit or not so although not all are examinable this is uh, for this syllabus we are talking about f8 so all are not examinable there are certain standards that uh, that you need to memorize you don't need to uh, memorize the whole name of the or don't need to write the whole name of the isa you just need uh, you at least know which isa uh, number is relevant to which concept so this is a uh, necessary otherwise if you don't know uh, what is the name of the uh, the full name of the isa uh, it's not necessary for the exam a li list of examinable document is available on the acc website right you do not need to learn the names or numbers of the isa but you can learn the number i will suggest uh, all the way they are written here but you at least you learn learn the number uh, if you don't want to learn the whole name but you don't need to know and be able to apply the key principles and requirements of the standards moving forward main features of isa what is the main feature basically main features means uh, what is the purpose of isas isas if we uh, talk about in a layman uh, language uh, isas are basically to create the uniformity to maintain the quality of the standard in audit and assurance around the world uh, to maintain uh, professionalism all these are the basic features uh, now uh, read the here isas are professional guidance that the auditor must follow to ensure each audit is performed consistently and to create uniformity as well and to a required standard of quality like i said isas are not legal requirements uh, these are not legal requirements if there are certain things in the legal requirement of your country uh, and there are certain regulations that you have to follow in your own country then there could be changes in the audit uh, audit as well so if a country has a law in place which is inconsistent with the requirement of isa local law should be followed or prevailed right next one is isa are written in the context of an audit of the financial statements but can be applied to the audit of the other historical financial information as well isa must be applied in all but exceptional cases where the auditor deems it necessary to depart from an isa to achieve the overall aim of the audit the departure must be justified there should be a justification why you are against isa or why you are going against isa so there there should be a justification from the auditor as well to identify why you are uh, declining or going against the certain regulations of isas next one is the isas contain basic principle and requirements followed by application and other explanatory material to aid the auditor on how to follow the uh, requirements isa also contains principle and requirement there are certain guidelines as well that how you have to go uh, through the isa and uh, how you have to follow the uh, isas and there are certain guidelines as well right uh, hopefully hopefully you understood all these concepts and uh, uh you have learned uh, something about isa what is isa because we are now in my future videos i will i will be discussing uh, any concept with the name of the isa so that is why i have made this video to uh, give you an understanding what what is isa basically is so uh, keep watching my videos and subscribe to my channel
uh, I will be here with a new video about any new concept of audit and assurance. Hopefully, that would be related to ISA. So keep watching and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any queries, questions, you can comment below. Or I will drop down my number as well. You can text me on my WhatsApp number or any social media link. Thank you so much. Bye bye.